competitive environment here. So we will get another one. The answer on the side of FlyQuest as well that Uder picked up again here. I wonder if they just go Thresh, right? You just go Felios Thresh, get your bot lane, deny that from the other side. Um, Jose, you know, bringing up the Uder. We got to see Uder yesterday. It wasn't super effective though in that game. Um, you know, was the, the Ghost Lethal Tempo, just tank build. Yeah, it's also super common in Champions Q mm -hmm. and they always go that, that kind of uh, Malice Blabber build. Let's look at FlyQuest though. Can you answer, do you want to answer support right now? You mentioned the Thresh already um, and, and still is a pretty big possibility here with the Jinx. Trying to, you know, hook onto Flame Chompers. This would be very huh. defensive opening Ooh, though. Yeah, really defensive. So, you have like no engage now at all. Yeah. Unless they're going to draft some sort of a tank for Kumo. It's like, you don't have engage from jungle. You don't have engage from support. So you really need to bring it in somewhere else unless your, your plan is to just show up to every single dragon and make them come to you. Also, you can try and use Braum in some team comps to try and abuse long range carries. Yeah. Uh, and so Aphelios is uh, you know, fairly short range, especially as we get later into the game, unless he has green gun, of course. But Braum actually will will uh, enable you to leverage like rocket form Jinx, and if they get some long range control mage for Takui, which I expect for FlyQuest to go for, because that has kind of been their strategy, and uh, so do Cloud9, you know, taking down the Syndra here as well. Expect them to follow up on these bands. All right, well, we do have matched roles here in the first half of the draft, junglers and bot laners only, so plenty of solo lane bans here in the second half. The Thresh that was not banned or picked from either side, that one does stand out. I know we talked about Surprising, it a little yeah. bit, but yeah, Jinx and Aphelios normally both like that extra protection. Irelia and Nar banned away. It's a top side focus from FlyQuest in the second half of the band. And so the follow-up on the Syndra ban that I was talking about here for Cloud9, because again, they, they spent extra resources here in draft um, you know, banning away mid lane champions to try and set up Fudge and are going to follow with the Orianna. I was thinking, you know, both we both of Victor Corky both of Victor and Corky are up. Yeah, it, it's it's really weird to have five mid lane bans, you know, six even if you consider the Aurelia also yeah. flex mid, mid lane ban here uh, to be left with to the two premier ones up. Well, there's your graves locked in for FlyQuest. So that'll be the top lane pick. Cloud9 will know what they want to take into that, but the mid lane will need to be mm -hmm. blind. Corky was very, very popular for a while. That popularity has since taken quite a trend <laughs> downwards. Do it. All right. Okay. We, so we, we got some some a little bit of uh, you know questions and some excitement there yeah. injected into mid lane possibilities, but in the end. I wonder I wonder if Tukoi is gonna do anything different though, right? You know, because it's like I do feel like they need some sort of engage. If you go Victor, you are like all just kind of straight team fight, no hard engage whatsoever. It'll be tough to pick fights. And if they go Jace, like so you don't have an option to the, actually stop the poke. Yeah, and the one I'm thinking of, if you want a playmaking engage mid lane, Vex? is Vex. Yeah. That that is really the only one that kind of fits the bill right now. But I actually, you know, I guess if they if they compound it with Jace here, you do have a lot of range for Cloud9 later on into the game um, with double poke possibilities. So again, since you have a pretty defensive front line thus far for FlyQuest, okay. you need something to accelerate that pace. And Uder getting sped up will at least be able to, you know, engage on one person and, and get the uh, extra speed with your Ghost and your Zillion to uh, hopefully start out something for yourself. The thing that troubles me the most isn't just the lack of engage from FlyQuest, it's the fact that their opponents have two very strong mechanisms in both the Hecarim ulti as well as the Leona ulti. It just feels so much easier for C9 to call their shot and go for the play when they want. And they can play through sides with Jace, they can poke with Jace Corky, and they can hard engage when they get you low. Like they have more ways to win the game, it feels like, uh, where FlyQuest, I, I do think, has a really strong 5v5 if you engage into them. And I think their, their job is gonna be stacking dragons, stacking objectives, forcing Cloud9 to come to them and trying to punish them through that way. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty limited. If you fall behind, I think you just kind of lose with these gumps. And another thing too with the Zillion is that one of the weaknesses of this champion are typically long range poke. Because yep. if you can poke out opponents on the enemy team and not commit to a full com uh, engage, then the Zillion Revive doesn't have nearly as much Trading potential. Ult for a rocket? Uh, it doesn't yeah. have to look that good. If you're looking late game here, that's why I really like the last two picks of Cloud9. Um, I think that was very intelligent correction in the later stage of the draft.
and get the light show to kick it off. C9 versus FlyQuest coming into this week. Looking at these two teams, you would be thinking this one looks like a battle between two at the top of the mm -hmm. table. FlyQuest, unfortunately, slipping a little bit so far. They would be enamored to have an awesome game here and really be able to say, hey, 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 the last ones were a couple of slip-ups. We're still here to compete. I don't mean, if they beat Cloud9, they still are right near the top of the table. They would be behind TL, but these are two teams that are up near that top, and FlyQuest definitely looking for that bounce-back game. They have a monstrously strong level one, so I do like it invading with Braum Udyr. It's, it's pretty unmatched. So strong. Fudge just walking back oh, and forth a little around? bit. Oh, the Winter's Bite over the wall. Sukhoi's going to get the stun on the Winter's Bite, but nothing else. So at least they get a little bit of damage onto him, but Fudge can disengage from it. And because it's past a uh, minute and 10 seconds here, Fudge isn't going to be able to go all the way back to base. Uh, if you get that early damage around, you know, 50, 55 second mark, then you have enough time to go back to base, heal, and run back out. But it is going to cost them an early potion here for the Corky. That's not a huge deal because you're playing in Zillion, yeah, which exactly. is literally one of the least punishing early lane phases. But it is something for the Cloud9. Off their invade, they'll uh, take away red buff and continue down through the red quadrant here for Blabber. Would have been interesting to see if they wanted to just fully commit to actually taking taking the fight, you know, and try to invade and take that 3v3 potentially, because I do think Bramu Deer is so hard for the other team to match, but obviously just, just want to take that slight advantage and go forward from there. All righty, here in bottom lane, Johnson and Berserker, and these two champions that we've seen so much. Winsome, however, very aggressive type of pick in the Leona versus that Braum that we know excels at defense. It feels like so much of FlyQuest's hopes here are on Johnson being able to be that hyper-scaling, hyper-carry that can just be a force of nature that your opponents have to play into to make up for the fact that they don't have these engagement. A hundred percent agree, especially because Kumo's playing against Summit, and Summit has just demolished every top laner that he has gone against. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the FlyQuest lineup, all of this pressure of the, the big carry for this team, if they can you know, hope to pull out a win here, is going to be on Johnson's shoulders on this Jinx. You know, they do have the Zillion, and Tukoy is going to have to play that well in the fights to open up space for him. But how you're actually getting those kills is with resets for the Jinx. Well, Kumo dodges away from an accelerated shock blast there, but he sticks around long enough that Summit just goes into the instant melee combo. But Kumo oh. goes back in to try to turn it around. This is his own end of the line. Both top laners taking quite a few hits here. But Summit still has two potions in inventory, so he's going to have a sustained advantage here. Udyr is clearing towards top. We'll see if he can actually get in on this, because both these guys are very, very low. Jose has the angle. Maybe if he pops the ghost, but looks like he just wants to go towards Scuttle. Yeah, yep. Summit's already got his defensive ward up here, and he's going to get engaged on by a Blabber in the river. Jungler battle, ghost versus ghost. Jose already popped his. Blabber still has his ready to go. He knows that Hecarim does not win Double these battle. 1v1s against Udyr early on, so he'll be chased away from that one, and Jose can just walk through mid. No need to keep it a secret. They know where you're going anyway, and he will get both of those scuttle crabs here nice and early. Remember, these are reduced on the EXP value that they give, so it's not like you're completely slingshotting yourself super far ahead, but it does still feel nice for all that extra gold. Yeah, still is an advantage, and especially considering with the longer early respawn times of normal camps here, you have a bit of extra time after your first clear for our, uh, all these power clear junglers, both Hecarim and Udyr. Uh, Udyr being a little bit faster, and part of the reason why Udyr kind of evolved back into the meta is because of uh, the clear speed here with your one point Tiger into Phoenix being able to outpace pretty much everybody in the early stages and then start to focus on those objectives. So that's what we're gonna focus on now too as well. Okay. You know, the, the dragons down there towards the bottom side of the map. We already talked about how bottom side is gonna be really yeah. important for FlyQuest, but um, the dragon setup here is gonna be step number two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Udyr can solo that out so incredibly easily. Uh, and that's going to be kind of their mechanism. You know, you, you talked about Jinx Zillion. Uh, that can be powerful, you know, utilizing the range of the, of the Jinx, speeding him up and just kind of having him get his pseudo poke. But it's always going to be so dangerous to step forward into potential Shock Blast plus Corky Rocket. So they really do need the threat of a soul. And the fact that it's going to be Cloud Dragon as the first dragon means pretty much any soul they get, they're 
probably going to be pretty happy with. Exactly. That's one thing that always feels good about seeing that nice and early on, that Drake is alive, and we will be tracking Jose very carefully to see how soon FlyQuest wants to start these Drakes going. That control is imperative, getting it up there as early as possible, making sure that they can stack towards it ASAP also means a lot. Down here in bottom lane, farm's pretty much even, and the same story's being told in mid as well. Top side Summit is already starting to build an advantage for himself. Of course, he is pushing towards his opponent, it appears, so that means Kumo can alleviate some of that here in a minute. And while we have our magnifying glass on bottom side, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Berserker's Deathless, undefeated Ophelios. Thankfully, you are not remiss. <laughs> no, sir. This man has... You are simply miss. <laughs> <laughs> I never miss. Berserker <laughs> never misses either, baby. Not on Ophelios. He has yet to even die on this champion. That's pretty good. Actually just stomping so many games for Cloud9. So, uh, you know, while we while we set up that bottom lane clash, <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, that was the, that that was the most... That no, was the one that broke it's you. Just, it's because yeah. it's from you and your whole thing is literal world champion. This is... That's actually the commentary that I expect from a literal world champion. Oh, you didn't die? Okay, that's pretty it's good. It's like the slash R Korean advice. You yeah, know, it's just, just like, How do you, you beat the Dark Souls boss? Well, you don't get hit. If, if you wish to win more games of League of Legends, simply be better than your opponent. Destroy the enemy. Ah, yes, okay. Well, down here in bottom lane, we got a little bit of a scuffle over a scuttle. As Jose and Blabber are both going to find one another here, the scuttle crab's going to be taken low. Looks like that one's going over to the side of Blabber, and it's Jose Diodo brought back to life by FlyQuest mid laner. Uh -oh. C9 collapsing for the fight. And FlyQuest are about to collapse entirely. Afrobo and Johnson both about to die. Berserker goes over the wall, but he does not have the range to catch his opponent. Two to one for C9. Yeah, Cloud9 kind of demolishing here. A little bit wasted that flash there for Berserker, trying to chase the Jinx that was already excited with the extra move speed there. But it, it's okay even giving over the extra cooldown on that summoner spell because they bowled them out of the river. They still have priority for bottom lane. I want to highlight what happens after these fights a lot of the time, and that is, since Berserker got to chase him out of the jungle, he then also gets to push the wave after they won the river fight yeah. there. They steal away blue as well. So, uh, you know, Cloud9 gains so much off of this river fight. Meanwhile, Summit is happy once again. Oh, Team Gap, nice! <laughs> as he's pushing away up on the top side, getting his own money. Yeah, and the Team Gap creates the, the solo gap where it's like, you know, he's able to push with reckless abandon here. I and mean, you wouldn't think that you could actually skirmish against this Udyr and this Braum, but you know, Afro not able to get in there until pretty late. Hey, everyone's kind of isolated, so it's essentially a 3v2 on the top side for Cloud9. The Zillion ulti has to be spent very early. And then when Jose comes back up, he's already still so low that it's just a full-on retreat. Berserker's going to be able to attack forward very, very comfortably. I don't know if he was looking for like a flash Q for the root over after, but that was still on cooldown, I think, and maybe didn't quite have the range. Well, either way, the fight still goes the way of C9. The Drake is still alive. You guys were talking about soul stacking, talking about the importance of Drakes for the side of FlyQuest. We're already eight minutes in and the Drake hasn't been taken. What's yeah. the latest that you would say is probably acceptable for them to really start looking for this? Because I expected it to already be done. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we want it probably by 10 minutes for sure. Uh, I do think that these compositions without engage require neutral objectives to force the pace of the game. Because Jace is beating Kumo in the top lane very comfortably. He is going to be split pushing. You need to have something that says, you can't split push. Come here and fight us. And unless you don't take the dragons, you don't have that. Yeah, and honestly, even when summon go, Summit goes there to fight them and you get that shock blast in the back, yeah. that's looking like it's going to be painful because you mentioned you know, how well he's doing on top side. His tier is stacking while this giant CS lead is accumulating over Kumo. And he constantly also is able to push Kumo in to get first roam. So... This protects your Rift Herald efforts, and I would think that Cloud9 would want to leverage this, you know, advantage that Summit has already earned by himself without having to commit from bottom side. And so this is going to be a trade of objectives. FlyQuest will get their first dragon in trade for this Rift Herald, but uh, Cloud9 are going to force on Kumo. This is looking like a good dive. Oh, it is indeed. Kumo had no oh. chance. Chilling Smite with Devastating Charge just gets it done. Blabber even recognizing how free of a kill that was, just lets the Herald go, doesn't even bother completing it, picks up the kill instead. Now he can go back for the objective, which is traded away for that first Drake of the game for FlyQuest, round about nine and a half minutes in. Yeah, it is something for them, but the, the lane is just going to get worse and worse for Kumo. Uh, he is so far behind now at this point. All these plates are going to be farmed up here by Summit. And Summit is just so good at playing these matchups aggressively as Jace. So he good really at understands 
true, uh, but particularly on the Jace, like he just understands his limits completely, knows exactly when he's going to win his raid, is always willing to go aggressive in melee form to actually take these quick trades and whittle down his opponents. Yeah. Oh, I mean oh no. Oh, Kumo's just going to face check the accelerated shock blast. He gets right back to lane and immediately has to deal with this. 100 HP, go right on home. Uh -oh. Or will you? He will. Collect. Blabber's on the way. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And Blabber gets the kill. Jose Diodo's ready to try to answer him here. And a ghost and Udir should have no problem sending Hecarim back to the glue factory. <laughs> All right, Summit says, hey, Blabber, there's another uh, kill up here on Kumo waiting for you. So he does go to collect it. This one is traded back, but it also Cost the teleport cooldown here. Takui mm -hmm. used that to um, the tower there as we are still pre 12 minutes. So it is another resource that is going to allow basically Fudge to free push in mid lane, continue to scale this Corky, who, by the way, also got credit for one of the early kills and is going to be an absolute menace pretty early on here. And we have a moment to just talk about Cloud9 as a whole this weekend. They have been outstanding. I feel yeah. like yes, yesterday might have been the single best game that we've even seen from this Cloud9 lineup. Absolutely. They have been firing all across the map, extremely clean. I, I just feel like this this team is is on a very steep upward trajectory. Uh, totally. And, and there's so much room for them to grow. Like, Fudge just swapped to this role, right? When when I think back to last year, how he looked as a top laner in lock-in to where he looked at the end of the year, if he can mimic that sort of trajectory, like, he's starting from a much higher point as a mid laner than he was as a top laner in the LCS last year. So I'm really excited for where this team can go. Summit has been unbelievable. Berserker, everyone is just blown away by his mechanics. Blabber is still playing incredible League of Legends. The whole team really is, is looking very, very good. Meanwhile, on the side of FlyQuest here in this game, their efforts do revolve around Johnson. And he is the richest person on their team because of these turret plates that their bottom lane has been able to get, but it might explode into a skirmish here through Dry Brush. Okay, C9 wants nothing to do with it. They'll back away. They're saying, all right, that's new deer. He's pretty scary. But oh, you know what's man. even scarier than a man in that's tiger so pajamas? Turns out one of the main characters from Arcane. That's right, Arcane from, from Arcane? Games League of Legends. Yeah, Jace from Arcane. Just doing work up here in the guy. top lane. What a great show. That is Hextech technology. I think it might be, but he's just absolutely demolishing the top lane. 45 CS lead. What on earth is this man? Cloud9's top laner just does it game after game, man. Yeah, Summit is scary no matter what he's wearing up there. Bottom lane, though, there's the engage. Okay, Afro Moo's gonna tank it up for a while and FlyQuest turn it right back around on a win. So Moo's down to 400 HP. FlyQuest bringing in the backup now. Nice root, the oh, drive awesome. by CC. FlyQuest get two. And Johnson gets paid. Jinx excited is gonna be able to earn another turret plate down for him. The FlyQuest hope of the Jinx win con is alive. That was really nicely played from Takui, finding the double stun there, setting him up for that kill. They're gonna be able to take the tower. Unfortunately, Summit doesn't need any help <laughs> no. up on this top side. <laughs> Graves, is oh, Gra no. Graves is down three <laughs> levels, man. Graves has been downgraded to a caster minion here. I will also shout out, that is the first Aphelios death for Berserker. All you, rest in peace as soon as I mentioned the- <laughs> All empires <laughs> end about eventually, what my friends. We are seeing the end of an era here. Zero, one, and two, though, still feeling all right. Behind a little bit in farm compared to the Jinx. But again, you're behind a little bit on farm compared to a Jinx when you're not the only win condition for your team. The hell? It's 13 and a half minutes, and Summit's recalling at your secondary tower. That's his secondary fella. tower, actually. He could have it all <laughs> as they're going to go in bot side. And Winsome gets dangerously low, but it doesn't look like he was going to get out until the roam from Jose and Takoi come in. Yeah, all right. Aframu with a bit of a whiff there on the ultimate. But Takoi says, I've got you. Got him with the Everfrost plus double bomb. And then Johnson uh, getting the kill here on the Straggler and finishing up on that turret. So. We'll check in on this gold. Thank you, Observer. <laughs> Perfect. Just what I was thinking. I was willing this to pop up. And Johnson here is behind Summit by a fairly <laughs> significant margin. But consider that everybody on FlyQuest is built to play around Johnson. You've got Aframu, the most defensive support in the game. Braum here um, should be able to have better ultimates than the one we saw last time uh, on bottom side to be able to peel for him and Takui. Uh, obviously, with the Zillion trying to speed him up and, and create that space, so FlyQuest's goals in this game remain the same. Well, talking about FlyQuest's goals, one of them just encountered a significant road bump. 
Cloud9 take the second Drake of the game, and one of the reasons why they're able to do so is the threat of Corky Package. Oh. This is such a powerful tool against one of these Drake stacking compositions that feels like they need that soul threat. Cloud9 has just secured them a situation where they know that that soul is still so far away and the game is feeling A-OK -okay until then. Top side, Kumo will apply pressure to the Tier 1. He will get the Tier 1, so at least the turrets are tied up 2-2 two to two right now. But Kumo is still nowhere near the power level of Summit here in the sideline. And remember now, that with, the, with the package tower being 5 minutes, there's going to be a big discrepancy yeah. for the second dragon um, that, that does pop up. So uh, it won't be a big extra lever for Cloud9 to pull there. And FlyQuest, they've been able to at least keep the gold in a manageable uh, difference here for themselves. We'll see if they can actually funnel some more money here onto Johnson. As you can see, yep. you want to rotate your AD carry over to the one outer tower that you still have left here mm -hmm. to try and farm through mid and get Kumo some split pushing going on bottom side. And to put it into context, I mean, Cloud9 is, is 19, well, 1,700 gold ahead now. And individually, Summit is 2,600 gold ahead, right? So if Summit is in a side lane with Kumo, even if Kumo is just not having a fun time, the 4v4 actually looks pretty good for Flyquist. They are up gold in that 4v4. So really, you just want to fight anywhere Jace isn't. And one thing I do want to point out here about Johnson, look at the build, the item in the third slot there, he the probably. Vamp Scepter, really respecting the fact that the poke from both Corky and Jace doesn't have a good solution in FlyQuest's composition, so that has to be made up for with the itemization. FlyQuest ready to challenge here for the Rift Herald. My They'll run in. Looks like they're going to have a good shot at this. It's stolen away from Jose Diodo and FlyQuest. Nice response and no cost. I love a, I love that. A good, clean, old-fashioned mm -hmm. smite fight. Nobody yep. dies, okay? You don't... Let's keep this clean, gentlemen. No gentlemen's support handshake. involves. Yep. Smites only, no PvP. There's two junglers at the Rift Trail. No eyeball opens yep. up. I like it. Nice. And uh, you know, Jose even slips in there to pick up the eyeball as well for FlyQuest, which you know may be used. Uh, to get them a little bit of extra tower damage here towards mid to try and even up this map control. If you can take down that pivotal mid turret before the dragon does spawn, makes it so much easier to get mid prowl, yeah. at which, you, which you want before transitioning into the dragon. Then you can push out that wave and have first uh, set up. Well, we've got ourselves some very, very fast... Very, very fast junglers right about now. Kim tanks completed on both of them, especially for Jose Diodo having that Zillion next to him. We're sort of talking about, yeah, they don't have a real engage, but Kim tank plus Zillion sped up Udyr does give you sort of a pseudo option. Yep. So that's kind of one thing I'm going to be focusing on more as we're now almost 18 minutes into the game, as bigger team fights are likely and pretty much scheduled to happen, is what do things look like for FlyQuest, who will have much more of a difficult time picking where and when they want to fight. And I think that's why the vision setup becomes really important if they can get there first, set up their wards, make Cloud9 check into them, then yes, a sped up zillion out of a brush that you don't see is much more threatening than when you, you see a screen away trying to walk towards you because Leon is just going to stun him up and then yeah. he's going to get focused down. Uh, FlyQuest are also going to have to deal with the fact that they're very low on magic damage. So, you know, this Frozen Heart, Chem Tank, Blabber is going to be really, really <laughs> difficult to actually get down. The Armored Blabber is the deadliest. Yep. <laughs> An armored blabber. Let's see what Metal Gear Blabber can accomplish <laughs> here in this game. He already had the axes in the promo. Yeah, he's... So now he's got a horse he's riding. He's ready to go, man. This guy's going to be a problem for the side of FlyQuest. Cloud9, still 2,000 gold up. Our next Drake is spawning in 55 seconds. And going back to what y'all were talking about earlier, yes, the Corky package was used for the last one. It should not be ready for this one unless this gets delayed significantly. So that means I'm looking at FlyQuest to be ready to fight for this Drake, to set up there first, to be able to force their opponents to play into them. And Cloud9, again, so much of their advantage uh, is on Summit and him being the one to leverage it. They should keep on split pushing and it's not on them to force around this dragon. They just want to buy time for Summit to continually get some advantages up here. Because FlyQuest, no, they cannot answer him. They would have to send multiple members, and even yeah. then, they might get outplayed 2v1. Yep. So Summit basically uh, just needs Cloud9 to give him whatever time they possibly can, and he will get them increased advantages. All right, the 4v4 has some rockets flying back and forth from both sides here. Johnson still not on a completed second item for this fight. Could be troubling for the side of FlyQuest. They will have Johnson down into the Dragon Pit first. Jose Diodo right next to him. They will start this one up. Tukoi and Aframu are going to be in charge of trying to keep C9 away, but C9 seems unafraid. Labber leading the charge. 
Takes a little bit of damage on his way in, but a TP's about to show up here for C9. Summit's ready to join the fight. They're gonna bring Kumo in on the side of FlyQuest. Blabber takes a ton of damage here in the pit. He has to smite for his life, but the Dragon's gonna go over to FlyQuest and Jose Diodo. The Resurrection comes out to bring Johnson back to life. C9 still seeing if oh, there's a fight to be wall. taken here. Berserker goes forward. They're still trying to kill Johnson, but they can't quite get him. Jose Diodo with a nice body block there, and Summit still looking to cut off the escape. Such low health bars on both teams. Can they get out here to Koi? Oh, Summit just blows them up. The power of the side lane, Jace. Blabber's gonna try to hold him in place a little bit longer. The damage pours through. Summit's still on the back. The rest of Cloud9 cleans up the front. The pincer attack is complete. Kumo barely walks away, and C9 just picks FlyQuest apart on the back end of it. FlyQuest may have gotten the dragon, but Summit will not let them escape with their lives. Around the inside, Summit cutting off the escape. They're allowing Cloud9 to pick up four kills. In trade for just a dragon number two, that does not get you any meaningful distance here in this game for the side of FlyQuest. They can hope that they'll be able to you know, continue stacking for later. 6,000 gold lead here currently for Cloud9, though, as Summit tries to escape. Well, Takoy's ready with the TP. He flashes for the Everfrost root. They get the bomb stun. Takoy nearly dies in response. Super Mega Death Rocket even fired oh off just God. to make sure. So pretty much two and a half had to be committed there to take down the Cloud9 raid boss. Yeah, that's tough. And we're seeing kind of the weakness of, of the lack of engage that FlyQuest has, right? Because even though Johnson's strong and he goes forward, he gets revived, it's just Corky poking you over the wall. It's all about C9's poke. And if you look down here, you know, Fudge is going to come over to this area later on in the fight. He's just constantly poking away him and Summit. Their job is to get them interested in the fight, poke them down, and then kite back over and over and over. And FlyQuest says, all right, we need to stop this, so let's hard engage. Let's make something happen. But they just don't have the ability to actually lock them into a fight. And it's really smart uh, by FlyQuest. You see, Takui buys them space. They burn down Blabber, forcing his smite to be early, so they know they can secure the dragon smite there for Jose. But then, as you're saying, after the Zillion ult is already used, and Fudge is pelting him with rockets, then Summit's also shooting the Shock Blast over here. This is the problem where you've got Poke on both sides of you, and there's no escape for them. Summit, nicely done here, as he cuts off all five members, but nobody is strong enough on the FlyQuest team to run through Summit, and so they get dissected and pulled apart every member here going down. Then Kumo, at least he's able to flash that Shock Blast, and so yep. he runs away, but Cloud9 got so much gold and so much territory off of this fight that <laughs> they can just return to sieging now because Bokers. they're they're two big damage dealers are fully online. This is already well past the two item power spike for Corky. Yeah. Summit cleared that one a long time ago. He's already three, so <laughs> they're ready to siege up, and. Um, you know, leverage this extra long-range damage that they do have. And now it feels like their confidence actually set up around Baron. If Berserker's on red-white, you can always threaten the Baron take. They have great turn off the Baron. You have a lot of armor on Blabber, so we can actually tank it up pretty effectively as well. But they're just buying time right now. It's four mid while Corky goes top, because Corky is the one with teleport. Summit is not. That's why he is grouped as Fudge just pushes outside and waits to draw pressure. And this is why I talked about for a draft. I really like that Cloud9, they didn't show poke early. They invested their last mm -hmm. two picks on blue side, which are only then counterable by a single pick on FlyQuest side as being their two long range pokers. So whenever you're you're going through draft, the most obvious thing into long range poke is we need to draft engage. But yeah. since Cloud9 waited so late in the draft and they saw FlyQuest already didn't have any and they only have one pick left, then they pick it up and they say, great, counter us now. <laughs> well, that's why I was kind of surprised that when, when Cloud9 actually banned Vagar, that FlyQuest banned all these mid laners and didn't ban Corky, because that's the matchup that most people are trying to avoid these days in pro. Instead, they banned things like Ari, which, you know, that single target burst from a champion like that is more easily answered from Zillion. So uh, maybe thought they could get a lot more done in the early stages, but it's a tough job for them ahead now as they are staring down the barrel of their third straight loss. Went 0-2 yesterday, some pretty tough defeats. Came into this tied for first, and they might be walking out of it 5-4. and four. It's been a super sad week for, <laughs> for the yep. big environment.
Yeah, not exactly a great feel for a team that was honestly performing so well compared to everyone's expectations. It feels like, I, I hate this expression because I've heard it so many times, but I have to say it because I can't think of anything more relevant. They're, they're turning back into the pumpkin a little bit here. It's also organic because it's pumpkin. So that's... <laughs> well, that, simply being a vegetable does not make you organic. But they're they're gonna... from nature, dude. That's where vegetables come from. All right, all right. That's I'm organic. With I'm with you. That's where organic gonna gloss past this one, Kobe. Let's let him have okay, it. No, okay, no. No right, synthetic fun. pumpkins here. That's the real point. We take a stand. Are you okay? talking about like an android pumpkin? You know what? Never mind. Cloud9, <laughs> I don't care about android pumpkins. If that's what FlyQuest is, and they're doing a good job hiding the fact that they are just actually not the environment, but robots the whole time. Yep. Cloud9 will take their second drink of the game. No pesticides were used in the creation of this League of Legends game. Nope. Uh, disclaimer. 100% pesticides free. <laughs> no animals harmed. I'm getting bullied, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't you love TriCasts that are two versus one? <laughs> it's a good time. It's a good time. It's OK. Well, you guys can gang up on me. We'll make it even. We got ourselves a 6,000 gold lead. So really, it's Cloud9 Bully and FlyQuest here in mm. this game. Mm. Their control over the whole rift is just immaculate at this point. Honestly, I'm looking for the Baron setup. I'm looking for them to push this issue forward. I don't see a reason not to. Yeah, I, I agree completely. You can you can set it up. You know, you have a Felios who can burst it down very effectively. Keep playing through sides with Jace, trying to get that vision out there. They're now invading up into the top side jungle. You try to get down some wards so your soul laners can play through sides. But you know, they're really, really strong at this point in the game. And Infernal Soul is even scarier if the game goes late on a poke composition. All right, so for FlyQuest, yes, it, it looks very dire for them, but they do have the advantage of speed, so maybe they can group i always do this in solo queue i'm like all right our last hope we got a group as five and then hope to pick someone off yep. uh, and, and catch them while they're trying to split push while they're trying to increase their advantage against us and since they do have you know zillion to speed up the udir you know that kind of is the only shot there really just you know get some fog of war coverage for yourself by clearing out some of this vision behind baron and then send it on someone that you see you see someone exposed at yep. all uh, even if there are double teleports ready, those teleports take time. You take time. those. Those teleports take time to channel, okay? <laughs> four seconds. Yeah, so. There's a lot can happen in League of Legends in four seconds, That's my friend. what FlyQuest are telling themselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Jose is going to see Summit going for a recall down here. Summit, uh, level 16 here on the Jace, the highest level champion on Summoner's Rift in this game. No surprise on that one. Been left to his own devices. 80 CS above his lane opponent. That's a lot. 10 CS above the next highest person in the game, which is also his teammate in his own mid laner. So things are going great for him. This guy continues to impress time and time again, whatever he's playing on. His skill in top lane is just a joy to watch, really certainly is you know the, the pressure that he creates is also what is allowing them such easy setup for all this vision around baron again cloud nine have tried to invest in some safety here because they know yes you know even with this big advantage if we lose a full team fight to a jinx reset comp you know and that definitely happens yep. uh especially when you've got zillion possibilities here the it, it is definitely still losable from their side uh, FlyQuest, if you win a big team fight, you could even get uh, Baron afterwards. The rewards could be very big if they can actually start it out by picking one person a little bit isolated and getting the first reset on Jinx passive. We got two minutes left until the Drake, my friends. It will be soul point for whoever gets it. But we're almost 30 minutes into the game. We'll be past that point by the time it spawns. The Jinx continues to scale. Three items for Johnson. Winsome's ulti not going to get a stun. Only some hmm. slows there. FlyQuest can walk away from it. So I kind of still like fishing for, for that, even if it's a decently low percentage chance. Because you've got a minute, uh, and at the time of casting, 40 seconds until the dragon. Yep. So he, he, he will have time for it to come back off of cooldown in preparation for the dragon, even in preparation for the vision fight over the river leading up to it. So while it is, you know, looks like, oh, it's just a cooldown kind of thrown out there, you've got the luxury of doing that when you're trying to play around this. Absolutely, and if your plan is just play through Okay, time, you're there's, you're a pick. Oh. there's a pick, there's a pick! You want to talk about a luxury? Winsome has the luxury of barely staying alive as Cloud9's getting stunned up underneath the turret. The Berserker is already down, but Summit has joined the fight, so the fight ain't fair anymore. He's ready to go, and he will just eviscerate 
everyone on FlyQuest. FlyQuest begins this fight by killing the enemy AD carry, and it ends with a Quadra kill for Summit. Summit is taking over the Quadra here. All of his hard work getting ahead throughout this game pays off huge there as he's able to join the fight <laughs> and erase FlyQuest from the map. He is looking so damn clean. That was not any kind of an NA chase that I've ever seen before. That... Well, I don't know what you guys are talking He's about. He's in North America. He is right now a North American Jake. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you have to update. He's redefining the memes. He is redefining you, North American You need American to update Jake. your memes to the current situation. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, because here he is, pro view of Summit's chase. Flashes on him for the first kill. And then a lot of damage is also set up here with uh, Fudge trying to follow him, but man, Summit doing some heavy lifting this entire game, by the way. It's not like he came in and it's like, wow, Summit got a Quadra. No, Summit smashed his lane, then picked up all the kills after the dragon fight this for man the was, team. was proxying Kumo at like level eight. Watching how fast he enters his inputs and immediately goes into the next action after the previous one is complete. I yeah. feel like I'm watching somebody play a different game compared to myself playing Skarner. Ha ha, farm the camp. Ha ha, gank the guy. And Summit's just over here like 400 APM, I will kill all of you. Especially because he's not just mashing spells, he's actually weaving autos in on a lot yeah. of the combos as well. He's getting the passive auto off every single time when he's changing his form to Speed. actually amp the damage. Oh, get her go! <laughs> no! He doesn't get anything. They didn't realize he didn't want that. That was, that was a puppy gaming. dog chasing a, <laughs> chasing a tank right there. You do not want to chase after <laughs> this man. Ah, oh, dang. When, when your hopes your hopes of engage are the Udyr being super sped up and the ghost is used and you, you decide even with five people Level trailing. Level 18 Jace, I don't think I want this. He starts <laughs> running the other way real fast. Well, that level 18 Jace will continue pushing up the bottom lane. C9 has already broken the mid lane inhibitor turret. Mid lane inhibitor is exposed. Blaver's sticking around to keep those minions enchanted, make sure they have that extra pushing power. However, Fudge goes back to base. He has teleport to rejoin the rest of the team. You can see him coming back into the enemy jungle now through there. Cloud9 also on soul point now. Cloud9 continuing to get as much as they can out of the remaining 60 seconds or so here on this Baron. Jose Diodo moves forward, but without the ghost, he's not really that much of a threat of getting onto these guys. They're not that afraid of him. They just step right back in. They clear out their second inhibitor turret with Fudge locked and loaded, recently purchased, ready to go. He's able to provide the threat back in mid. Two different inhibitors about to fall down at the same time. Fudge takes a little bit of damage and Cloud9's ready to go in. Johnson wants to get away. He'll disengage for now, but Takoy is dead before he can even ulti. FlyQuest will join him and Cloud9 wraps this one up. That'll do it. Triple kill there for Berserker. The Inferno multi cleaning up FlyQuest as Cloud9 are cruising. Will Thai Team Liquid for first? Super weak for Cloud9. Holy moly, this team is hot. 3-0, and all of them full control from this guy. They, they are looking definitely better than ever. This was an awesome game for Cloud9. It felt like a pretty big difference even from draft. You guys talked about how it felt like yeah. C9 had more ways to play. They had more win conditions. They had poke, they had the side lane. FlyQuest felt like there was very much one way that this game needed to happen. It was fed Jinx, but the Jinx always felt like she was just trying to keep up with Corky and even more so with Jace. Yeah, props to the team, props to the coaching staff there. I am already thinking I want to see this Cloud9 Team Liquid matchup. That's what guys. I was just going to say. I, oh, when is yeah. when is that coming down the pipeline, <laughs> man? I'm ready for it. This is always it's always so exciting to see teams popping off like this. I and mean, when you get to see them go head to head, oh, give me one of them absolute bangers that you don't know who's going to win until the last very team fight happens and everything explodes. But man, C9, people were curious. People were doubting People had a lot of questions after things happened with the coaching switch, after LS, like being removed from the coaching squad, everything else changing up. Is this still going to be fun? Is this still going to be cool? Are they still going to be good? <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. 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 Cloud9 check, is check, still doing it. Check. They're looking really, really good. And I just checked. Uh, it's March Fourth 13th. Check. Is is the TLC nine game, and it Mark feels the like we, we, might, we might be headed towards that collision course because that feels like these two teams are far and away the best two in the league right now. They are looking incredibly good, and that would be such a fun game to watch.
Well, now we're going to get a quick word from the fudge factor in our variety.